the mid to late 2000s. There has never been an edgier time frame in the history of our planet. Sonic characters were packing heat, Looney Tunes looked like reject Ben 10 aliens, Bomberman got into some heavy BDSM, and Peter Parker had to do this with his hair because that's what you do in the mid 2000s when you're angry, I guess. <laughs> Naturally, this edgy time frame had to find its way to football and football video games. Midway is no stranger to controversial imagery with the Mortal Kombat series. I mean, look at this brutal fatality. Aw, that's kinda cute. Oh shit! The NFL Blitz series by Midway was originally supposed to be more violent with blood, dog piles, and neck breakers. But once the NFL representatives heard this, they were like, Hell no! So Blitz was toned down in order to be made. They were still violent, but it's not the vision Midway wanted. After numerous NFL Blitz games, EA swooped in to take the NFL license all for themselves. This left the Blitz series with no NFL license to utilize, but without the restrictions that the NFL provided, they can go all out with, well, anything. This leads to Blitz The League. Yeah, buckle the hell up. Blitz is everything in football that the NFL and Madden shy away from. Since there's no NFL license, you have teams from a fictional league called The League, hence the title. Gameplay is standard Blitz gameplay, which is a good thing and a bad thing. No refs, no penalties, no rules. Rules are for losers. While the game offers up some fast paced arcade gameplay, the bad side of that is that the game has little to no depth or complexity whatsoever, and playing defense in these games is always a toss-up. There's only a small amount of plays to choose from, and doing something as simple as switching between a defender is more cumbersome than it needs to be. There's this meter called the Clash Meter. You gain meter by having positive plays on offense or defense. When you use the meter on offense, time slows down and you can do these hard-to-stop jukes and stiff arms. On defense, you break bones. This is where the controversial stuff starts to come up. Using Clash Meter on defense lets you dirty hit a player, which can lead to these Mortal Kombat X-Ray-esque type of injuries. The injuries can vary, and you actually do have concussions, which is something Madden games don't have. When a player is injured, you can choose to treat it naturally, which takes longer to come back from, or you can eject them with juice. <coughs> Steroids. <coughs> All right, hold on a sec. Help is on the way. Doing that means they'll come back faster, but are more susceptible to re-injury. Now, this juice stuff is world changing, and I don't know why we don't use this stuff outside of football. I mean, this guy breaks his fingers, he takes juice, and he's just right back out there the next play. I didn't know this juice stuff has bone healing properties. Broken leg? Take some juice. Concussion? Take some juice. Ruptured a tendon? Take some juice. Snapped your goddamn spine in half? Well, you're paralyzed, man. There's no coming back from that. <laughs> nah, just kidding, man. Take some juice. Get back out there. Now, to be fair, there are some injuries that can't be juiced, but it rarely happens. Throughout gameplay, you earn these tokens from doing clash moves, scoring touchdowns, dirty hits, and the most offensive thing in the game. Seriously, turn away or cover your ears because what I'm about to say is so offensive that super secret NFL agents have been sent to my home right now to prevent me from saying this. Taunting. That is a disgusting act. You can also gain tokens by these brawls that occasionally break out due to many dirty hits. These tokens go towards unlocking Unleashed mode, which is equivalent to Game Breakers in the NFL series. You can have an unstoppable play on offense or do a super dirty hit on defense, which will most likely result in a fumble. And 
Washington has the football. Chaining together token earning moves in one play is actually really satisfying to pull off, but the gameplay is something that won't hold your attention for long overall. Once the novelty of hurting someone and injecting them with juice wears off, there's not a reason to stay playing this for too long. Presentation wise is a mixed bag too. Firstly, this game takes a dog's age to load. I can warm up a Hot Pocket by the time it finishes. No joke. You have these little cutscenes that happen throughout the game of players talking trash to each other, touchdown celebrations and whatnot. I like them, and there are some lines that really do get a laugh out of me. Is this a hoedown? Well, you're a hoe, and I put you down. Hey, baby, it's me. Just letting you know I just scored. Like I'm gonna score when I get home. The problem is that once you've played about, I don't know, one or two, maybe even three games, you've seen practically every cutscene. I think I've seen this cutscene of the coach standing up more times than there is grains of sand on a beach. It comes up that often. There is commentary in the game, but it's almost non-existent. Midway didn't bring in the He's on fire! guy, Tim Kitzrow, probably because they thought his style didn't fit the tone of the game they were going for. But the guy they do have on commentary chimes in with the most basic shit. It's a deep. Touchdown Carolina. Amazing pass. A guy that can throw like that shows special talent. I have to wonder why this was even included in the game at all. The graphics are fine. The player models look good, but the female models are, in a word, grotesque. There's this moment in the campaign where you send escorts to the opposing team to screw them over both literally and metaphorically, if you know what I'm saying. But when these escorts get there, they look like burn victims. I'm not the most handsomest man in the world, but I at least want an escort that has her wrist attached to her body. Speaking of the campaign mode, yeah, that is a thing in this game. Modern sports games have dabbled in stories with not so good results. Does this game change that? No, not really. The story is nothing special. The team is bad and the owner blows everything up and we start from the bottom and work our way up to champions. Nothing we haven't seen hundreds of times in the past. The only thing is that this game tackles some real life issues like players being in debt. What do you mean the stock tanked? You said it was a sure thing. Yeah? Well, how the hell am I gonna pay off my ex? Sell my crib, I just bought it. Where the fuck am I supposed to live? The locker room? Don't lecture me, you jackass. You're the reason I'm in this mess. Just sell the fucking house, then go fuck yourself! Damn. He must have had a Nokia. But this is just a typical sports story. The only difference being, they try to replace good characters and writing with Edge, not the wrestler. In the first two cutscenes, we see characters just checking out other characters' asses for some reason. There's no joke here or some kind of payoff, it just happens. Why? Characters curse up a storm like a Tarantino film. Why? What the fuck are you doing? That was horrible. These guys need to watch their goddamn mouths. You can't just have edgy stuff just for the sake of it. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think the Spike Lee story from NBA 2K is better. As far as what you do in campaign mode, you start off by creating your new team. Location? Well, I really wanted to pick North Dakota, but they're not here. North Dakota? <laughs> Do you have any people live in North Dakota? So I guess I'll settle for Kalamazoo, which sounds like a wizard spell. Team name? Uh, Tennis Boys. You could select your coaches and doctors and even your own field to suit your playstyle. I'm actually kind of stunned you can do all this. So the goal is to climb up each of the three divisions by winning 7 out of 10 games in each then winning each division's championship. This goes from easy to ball-breakingly hard by the time you get to Division 1. There are things to help you out, such as training your players and drugs. Yeah, both legal and illegal drugs can be taken. That's fucking illegal. Fun fact, this is what got the game banned in Australia, which sounds bad, but they also banned the 50 Cent game. So that just tells me they ban anything. These drugs cost money and you earn money by winning games and you can even gamble on your own games. 
Man, they cover everything. Before each of the games, you get a video showcasing the opposing team's best player, which helps give the league some lore. There's only one player on the Baltimore Bearcats we need to talk about. Bruno Battaglia. Don't fuck with me! Yeah! Boom! No need to sugarcoat this. Battaglia is an asshole. We have to watch each other's backs out there, or half our team will end up on injured reserve. Suck on that! Motherfucker. Also, if it's a quarterback, we could just target him to injure and take him out of the game. Overall, campaign is enjoyable to a point before it gets old. Once you've done the campaign, there's really nothing for you to do. The irony of the game being called Blitz the League and not having some sort of franchise or season mode is not lost on me. You have some things in the extras menu, like different game types. But in order to unlock a good portion of these, you need to play quick matches exclusively. Like in order to unlock big head mode, you need to play 40 quick match games. Even if you were playing with a buddy, this would get old fast. But if you're a grody loser like me who plays by themselves, this is going to be 100% like a damn chore. You can also watch the Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks trailer, which is a pretty good game. Overall, Blitz the League is a lot like the things I mentioned in the beginning of the video. A mediocre game that would be forgotten if it wasn't for the overly edgy premise of the game. You can make an M-rated sports game that focuses on the darker side of the sport. I mean, look at Fight Night Champion. But the issue with Blitz the League is that the darker stuff is just window dressing to hide the fact that the gameplay, story, writing, and presentation are all mediocre at the very best. I like the stuff you can do in career mode, and the risk versus reward of the injury system is a cool idea, albeit a little silly. But that isn't enough. There was a sequel that I may or may not cover someday, then Midway went out of business and the Blitz series, funny enough, went to EA, who made a Blitz game that was even more watered down than the original arcade game. With the NFL becoming as strict as ever with their public image, and unlicensed football games traditionally not selling too well means we'll probably never get any other game like Blitz the League ever again. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to use Juice to see if it can bring my turtle back to life. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll never ask you to like the video, but I do have a goal in mind, and that goal is to own a football team in North Dakota or Kalamazoo. And if you like the video, I get one step closer to that goal.